new rule. Anybody that says Ashley Overo in any context in my chat is perma ban. Look at all of this glory. The WWF. We, we don't just. What is the studio audience thing? everybody and no now i fucked that up already didn't i you already You're like and fuck teenagers bro no um they probably make me don't clip that please would, how do you explain the hypocrisy of attacking chad then running and hiding when he swung back now pseudo threatening lawsuits oh my god you bought all that shit oh shlomo thank you for the five bucks but shlomo i've said this numerous times i've been very consistent about this I make fun of people. And uh, open your ears and you hear me. I'll say this one more time because I've tried to explain it and dumb people still don't get it or they're Pretty trying simple. not to. I make fun of people. I play their public performances. When somebody else goes to your children and your family and shit like that, that's when I say, you know what? That's a line I don't cross. Your kid became trans because you're a shitty dad. I'm going to wash my hands of it. I'm done. And as far as threatening lawsuits... Find one time where I ever threatened a lawsuit. It never happened. And look, Bob, I don't want any of what's coming to affect you. I know the blowback that's coming. That was a line you bought. You got to be smarter than that, Shlomo. I mean, to be able to be tricked by people like that, doesn't say a lot about even you, just pal. to be able to see like like there's a difference between making some fun of somebody professionally instead of like personal attacks yeah. on your kids and Look, shit your kid became trans because you're a shitty dad that's me insane i'm sorry that me tapping out of like mentally ill psychotic shit bothers you so much and you need me back so much i'm not going back to that place it's a gross place full of gross people i'm sorry and he doesn't he's out of the devil verse He's taking himself out of the Dabbleverse. He doesn't want to address us. He doesn't want those. The people listening to this show right now, he doesn't watch you listening to his show. He's made this very clear. Uh, so, yeah. And then I gave him the answer, and he still doesn't accept it. Uh, Lemmy, I need I need you and Balls Deep to be better uh, right now. Bounce him. Get rid of him. Welcome to Band World. I answered his question. He didn't listen to me. He didn't pay attention. He's not the kind of guy we want anymore on this show just start get a little more aggressive there uh lemmy and balls deep this stuff is not hard to understand yeah. they all got really butt hurt that we decided to move on uh april and i will not be at DabbleCon this year and i let them know hey sorry shit happens uh you know blah 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 how'd they take it bummed that we couldn't make it but they you know like oh we wanted to hang out with you guys we're gonna catch you at the next thing and i said absolutely maybe in the summertime when it's not freezing cold Maybe. in Rochester. And now they're, you know, what are, what are you going to do, guys? You don't play with children, ment mentally ill kids like that. These people are like, oh, you don't want to be as mental as us anymore. <laughs> oh, Imagine making her put on makeup to come down here and just sit here and scrimp all morning. An episode of The View. <laughs> just tell all these women they're past their prime. They're past their prime. Yeah. Just Don Lemon what going. What does that mean? Now they're doing the Don Lemon story from four weeks ago when he said they were past a... It's like, this guy's stuck in some time warp. 
He sees it on Kumia and then has to come do it over here. He's mimicking what he wants to be, but he's not good at it. And by God, I'm a journalist. Uh -huh. And when you're a journalist, you have to do a thing that's called uh, follow up. Mm -hmm. You have to when you bring people a story, you have to follow up on that story because you can't just tell people something. And then there's a development and you don't update them. Now you're not now you're giving people what they call on social media misinformation. Right. Half a story. I'm not a misinformation kind of a guy. Uh, <laughs> nobody. He has this warrant and you don't say anything. So you, oh, look at that scrap. Women do this where they know about something. They do nothing. And then <laughs> when things go back. Let's check out uh, Citizen M's clip. Early in the day, there's an I got an email from Zen Rhino during the show and I called him out live on the air. Citizen M's clip. What was wrong with it? What's wrong with the end part? I played the whole thing. You didn't play the scrimp part. I didn't know there was a scrimp part. I didn't watch it till this morning. I played the whole thing. And they do. They hang out and they'll fucking, oh, yeah, here's a fucking, here's, here's $2 to read six paragraphs. <laughs> oh, yeah, here's a fucking, here's, here's $2 to read six paragraphs. And then I'm fucking going and saying hi to Steel Toe in the morning. I see Zen Rhino just dumping, making it rain like they're fucking, like, they're, like, like April's flapping her pussy lips for all to see. <laughs> scrimp. You didn't play the scrimp part. I didn't know there was a scrimp part. What, what are you talking about? You cut out the part that said scrimp is referring to your wife being a scrimpy little shrimpy little little uh, you know. I know we do. I know we do the South Park joke about the scrimp <laughs> thing. We have it as a sound drop. But no, he's talking about me. Are you like upset with me? She's like constantly playing with her sleeves and rubbing her hands. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Just holding her own hands, wringing them. It's almost over, April. The show's in overtime. You're making $100 a day after taxes and YouTube feeds. It's all going to be fine. You and I look remarkably sexy this oh. weekend. and There are a lot of people on the internet who make their whole opinion on this show based on the fact that I got to marry a hot woman. We've talked about this before. Leads them to hate an entire program, which... Yeah. And then he decided he's going to start just kind of going, like not even going after Steel Toe, like watching the streams and like zooming in on April's forehead and making sexual con He's got a real weird hang up with April. I've noticed that with a lot of these guys, there's a very incel element to it. Patrick's got that weird hang up with April. That's why it's kind of hard for me to take it seriously. You know, it's kind of hard for me to take any right. criticism from them seriously. I take criticism from my own fans. I know they have our best interests in mind. The really creepy comments about April that I've heard about. I, Melton uh, saying creepy things about April. Could you be more specific? I think the zooming in on the forehead and then making appearance comment, a general fixation on a woman and her appearance while you're staring at their show on stream. It's creepy. When you say creepy, I think people think more like he's making like overtly sexual comments about her and things of that nature. No, it's appearance based comments. No, it's appearance based comments. It's appearance based making sexual con making sexual con which I think when a guy's which making none of the rest of us get right. When it's the guy and there's two people on screen and the zoom in and the fixation is on the chick. There's something weird going on because he knows it fucks with you. Let's be honest. He, yeah, he, kn he knows it bothers you. It's a little, I'm just getting into the psychology of it. Like what's, I'm interested in like, what's the thought process behind that? Like, what do you, what do you really, what are you really doing there? What the fuck? Something to munch on. Ooh, the oh, peanut butter I want, pie. I want something to munch on. Uh, no, it was Quitter by Eminem. Well, shit. What the do you fuck? What do you want to munch on? Your pie. Big boy. Your, oh, God. Now, now I'm all rock hard under here. Now I got cells. Remember when they keep saying, I sexualize April, I'm inappropriate about April? It's like, gross. Well, he does this every show. It makes me feel uncomfortable. April's been, feel out. April's been feeling her tits lately. Thank you for the $2. April's pink puffies. We, I have to grab my tits every time he I super chats. It. She's wearing a bra, but I tried to convince her to take take it off. But uh, sorry, no, we love we love a nipple moment. He, he says uh, we started a million. See if they'll do it. I will give you a pair of my panties for a thousand dollars. Jesus, you whore! My wife's a whore. I don't wear panties. Oh, that's retard. right. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Let's get out of here. What do you say? 
Okay. Thank you, guys. Fun night. Great show. Hope Jesus. you enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to get out of here. Happy... What? My shirt came undone while the uh -oh, video Oh, your was tits up. came out? Uh-oh. Uh, April's Ghost Nipped Boobies says, We've gone dark. Two dollars. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Camel Toast. Brag about how we're snitching. Well, now, come oh. on. I mean, you, they saw that you were kind of pulling some weird, dirty moves, and they called you on it. That's fair. I wasn't pulling weird, dirty moves. I and didn't deny it. This fucking mind, rules. I saw my... Uh, so the danger of cartel violence. <laughs> he tries to go back into the topic. But now it's, it's just me and April and old Johnny crutches, but Corey, he's got to go. I'm not gaslighting. This is the truth. I could never tell a lie. I'm touching my face. I'm tweezing my beard. Aaron is an honest guy. But you're too weird about germs. Like, if somebody touches the lid of the garbage can, April's like, you wash your hands right now. Well, it's that's like, because I don't want the kids getting sick. There's salmonella and stuff in there, shit. like eggs and stuff. On the lid of the garbage can. Yes, if the, the lid garbage of, can gets full. If yes. somebody touches the lid of the garbage can, they can kind of, they can go about their day. They I let do their this garbage so overflow. Don't get sick or you don't get sick. I don't know what the problem is. I resent washing my hands after I I'm the one the who has to clean up puke. When you guys throw up all over the place. I made it to the toilet. Thing. Wow, this is why you don't do a show with couples. Holy shit. Uh, six piles of Holy sh two weekends ago. I'm just saying, <laughs> if you wash the hands too much, you're going to get down to the bone. Oh. I'm worried. Well, I'm sorry then. You end up looking Holy like one of Davy Jones. Holy shit. So then, uh, like I said, we were going beside the uh, house. <laughs> And I had to clean up supply company. six yeah, piles like of puke. Aaron, why is your garbage can lid full of uncooked eggs? Protein. But let's knock this thing out right away and not even worry about it the rest of the day. All right. Uh, remember. Uh, she just rolled her eyes when he said that. Chris Curtis. Chris. Uh, executive producer. She's like, all we do is worry about money and haters. That's all we do on air and off air. Haters and money. Haters and money. That this guy's hauling this mic arm around town asking for help tightening it. No fucking way. I took that quarter and I, I took a, I took a pliers. I grabbed that quarter with that pliers. Uh, pliers. And wouldn't you know, success. And I got, I got the adapter off. I got my microphone back on my... He's starting out his show bragging about getting a mic arm and talking about how he had to run all over town to unscrew it. Aaron Imholt is the scum of the earth. You know, I there are things that we do have to just focus on as absolute true norths in this world, and I think that is absolutely one of them we should keep harping on and mention. A hundred percent. You know, I think Aaron is a natural bullshit artist. Clearly, yeah. he's a natural bullshit artist. I guess they do these prize shows. I should get the clip from Doug. I don't have it on the board. Probably should have researched this first, eh, Dad? <laughs> but they played this clip where Aaron's setting up, like, if you donate this amount of money, you'll get put into an auction or you'll get put into a drawing and you might be able to win a $5 gift card for this place or a $10 thing at that thing. It's like, give us 25 bucks and you could win $5 off. At I'm like, what the fuck? And it got more and more convoluted as he's going through the whole thing. Prize night, no goal. This is about giving back. Remember, they make Kevin Brennan money on prize night. Normal days, they scrounge around trying to raise $300. It takes everything in them to try to earn $300 over four hours. Hey, give us some money. Give us enough money and we'll fuck off. Huh? What do you say? Throw us enough money. Okay, guys, we're only $15 into the goal. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And uh, <laughs> he goes, he goes if, I, if we don't make enough money, I might have to stop. It's like, yeah, take the hint. Stop. <laughs> the, the universe is providing you an answer. Take the hint. Stop. Kevin and Chad can do it. Hell, this show, if I really wanted to just start begging for money, I'm sure I could get 300 bucks. But they try to do, I hate when they, the, the worst part of prize night is them spinning it into this night of giving back to you. Nothing illegal about picking some fans and going, here's a little something for you. Here's a little prize for you. Here's what we give out something for free every month. We, we throw out gift cards for free to people. We take one of our VIPs. I want to give them a hundred bucks out of my own pocket. We do that. And I can't believe that there would be someone so 
stupid that they would watch what those guys are doing and go, what? They're just trying to help somebody. This spinning it into this, like, tonight's for the fans. They make $1,500 to $2,000 on prize night. It's their most profitable night of the month. Clearly, yeah. he's a natural bullshit artist, and it would be fun to ask him some pointed questions about some things that are going on. Movie charges folks to enter contests with money prizes. Absolutely not. We sell them hoodies. We sell them T-shirts. We sell them stickers, and we pick one of them, and we go, here's a little something extra in the envelope. The problem here, again, is the way this question was phrased. Right. It allowed Aaron's a bullshit artist. If somebody had went to the Nobody Likes Onions broadcast from March 29th on YouTube and looked in the fucking description, you could copy and paste two lines. Hey, Aaron, it is illegal to hold a raffle in Minnesota online. That's a quote from the Minnesota Gambling Control Board. Aren't your prize nights and listener of appreciation events held online? Can you please explain to me how your prize nights conform with state law? You're not giving them that wiggle room at yeah. that point. You're he's asking him. He's got to ask that. He's got to answer that question. Very simple, right? He he fought, and that's the that's he's that's, a bullshit artist. It's a legitimate good faith criticism when you're running. A a sweepstakes kind of thing like that. I think legally there's supposed to be an option to enter without paying. We've all heard those disclaimers on television since we were kids, you know, no purchase necessary and that kind of thing. I think that's the criticism of what you're doing. And that and that's fine. And I think if YouTube would have had a problem with it the last year and Twitch the year before that, I think something would I don't have think happened. it's a question of YouTube though. That's it's the point of the like the law. It's well, we'll I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. I think it's above board. I think it's I think it's a nice thing. I think it's a wonderful thing. You pick out people who support the show all month long and you go, hey, here you go. Take a little something. If that look, if I'm a bad guy for doing that, then I'm a bad guy for doing that. We'll see. Well, I don't think anyone's saying you're a bad guy for doing it. I just think they're saying that the way you're doing it's not the right way to do it. I've, I've looked at the way it's supposed to be done. And in my mind, it is. If I'm wrong, then I'll be wrong. I would take it more seriously if after I answered the question, because this is about the 50th time I've answered this, and I've been very patient with it. Uh, every, if I answer it and people go, oh, okay, well, that's his answer. And then that's the last time you get asked. Then I would take it more seriously. The way it was asked, it allowed Aaron to give that stock answer. He fell back on an answer he's given time and time again. Hey, man, don't be a downer. Yeah, don't start with that. Don't be a bummer. Don't tell people you feel like shit. Fake it. Till you make it. <laughs> I, I've i kind of taken the concept of making it and just lowered the standard. For They're what getting exactly depressed. That means, and then I figure I'll be happy. You're kind of like, um, who is it? The Imagine telling your wife, well, I've just lowered my standards and now I can be happy. It's like, Jesus I'm Christ. A, I'm a Jew. I look at women like that, and I've told you this before, and I look at them and I, I go to April and I say, I could make her cry in three minutes. That is your favorite thing to do. Yeah. He's gone to bars before where he, he'll be with me and a couple friends and be like, see that girl over there? Yeah. Boy, it'd be fun to make her cry. Boy, it'd be fun to make her cry. I Damn. ain't danger. With five dollars says maybe oh. start the show with Ben Stein talking about black holes. I almost fell asleep driving from work. Well, maybe that bit sucked ass oh. then. Oh, well, we we're so sorry. We won't do that bit next time. Oh, <laughs> she is not <laughs> happy. Just look at my scrap Thank you guys very much. Uh, and mods, if you see anybody talking about any of the show's family members or anything like that. Including that, Super Chats. Yeah, that's not something we're into on this show. So mods, we don't do doxing family members and shit like that. Uh, ban them. Ban them immediately. Uh, we're not into that world. Like, we can do a show and beat people and get better viewership than other people without going Holy to Holy shit. The place. It, She's going to cry. I ain't into it. So if you guys see it. Get rid of it. There is a special place in mental hospitals for people yeah. who have to make fun of somebody's parents and for their sure. family. Uh, wild card with five bucks. Thank you very much. What Buddy. the Gray fuck? Duckling says, keep my name out of your mouth. Thank you. 50 bucks from Gray Duckling and Thanks. Nicholas with five bucks. Thank you very, this very much. This is wild. So this uh, is wild. From today's goal. We are getting there. It is getting close. Shrimp uh, Fest hey, is back. Says, Here, here's what it is. It's not even weird anymore. They Here we go. Us, they can't stop us from doing a show, so they just try to turn up the intensity as time goes on and bully more and more people, whereas they can't get us on that because what we do is make fun of people's content. Your kid became trans because you're a shitty dad? Once you start talking about people's family members, you're dead to me. 
I just <laughs> you're you just a go. bad person. Yeah, it's really. not it's not what I got into this business to do. If you got into the business uh, business to do that, you can square that away with your own you know ethics or whatever. That's uh, not what I got into it for. Family that not, that part of the internet. Look, man, they're not on the screen with us because I'd rather be run off than live in that world. So if if, if you want the internet to be that, I feel oh, bad for oh. you. Uh, if that's the way you have to get views and shit, that's too bad. I'll build my you show. You didn't even do anything about April's mom other than say she was fat and it started this. Uh, dirty my soul. <laughs> she Blue is snuckle. boiling, baby girl. Uh, 65 away from today's goal. Familiar Human says you're living rent free in their head. You've got to be pretty, like, you've got to be pretty deep ingrained in someone's psyche for them to go to that level. Thanks. I mean, sure, but <laughs> she's lost all the wind in her sails. Uh, let's check this one out. Hit play and let's move the show on to a better place. I like how this little puke over here is trying to be like um, a little bit of optimism. Like, hey, aren't we in a better place? <laughs> what was inside their neighbor's She did almost cry. It it's not a joke. She really did. Almost cry. Again. I might have done nothing. Two people came in your chat and said they're talking about your dad and your mom is fat. And then they had to stop and do a 10-minute piece about how I'm doxing their family. These guys don't know what anything means. I could show photos of your fat mama all day. That's not doxing, you dumb bitch. God damn. I don't yeah. know. So I, I have some faith, whatever. You can have faith and stuff like that. I like to just think that I'm a good person and I try to live my best life. But when it comes to actual religion. Did you just say religion, live my best life? Oh, no. Ugh. And I don't, I'll see Ew. myself out after that. Yeah. I try to I need be, you to leave now. I try to be a good person to others. Oh, I try to be a good can person. I, I live my best we, life and I YOLO till I rewind die. Rewind the tapes. Go over it. Um. I can't. It hurts too much to hear you say live my best life. What are you, a two-time divorcee at 40? I'm just going to live my best life and get a tit <laughs> job and ignore my kids. Oh, I'm so sorry. Do you feel like you're living your best life right now? I don't want to answer Do that, you feel but... like this right now in this moment you're living your best life? Yes, I'm slightly embarrassed. You're not because but... you said you're living your best okay. life. Anyone who says they're living their best life is going to kill themselves. Is she funny? Not at all. Not at all. So everybody. <laughs> I want to be fired this morning. <laughs> you know when my fever wouldn't go under 102 yesterday and my head was pulsating and stuff like that with pain and I was sitting in bed crying and you were angry with me that I was crying. I would have given anything for you to just hit me over the head with a right. shovel. It just hurts so much. Well, that's because I can't breathe. And I'm just going, stop, April, you have to stop. You have to, because I can see your muscles just going like this. I'm like, April, you're stop going. Stop yelling or I'm going to walk off the show. You're going, to, fe you're going to feel like shit stop if you keep doing this. Yelling. No, I'm performing. It hurts. Uh, she, uh, it hurts. Uh, Says no, that's not how the, that's no, you know, that's not how no, nope, you got to do the voice. Stop it and nope. I'll finish you fucking asshole. No. <laughs> do you see what you do though? You walk all over people. You know, that's why trying I, to do the thing you yeah. ask them to do. That's why I like having my show. Because I get to do that to people. You well, know I'm how many of my friends from high school have unfriended me because I'm with you? <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Like once, once I got with you, they're like, oh my God, how could she be with such a monster? And I've never heard from them again. Yeah, I just, that makes me actually feel I, good. I, and you know, I only found this out because my 10 year reunion is in like a week. And <laughs> I was looking through the list of people going and how many of them are not my friends on Facebook anymore. And I'm like, that's almost insulting. Uh, 30 year old Ray DeVito says, I respect you making her mow the lawn. <laughs> I don't get to mow the lawn in my own house. I've mowed the lawn like three times since she's gotten just here say thank you i enjoy doing it. i appreciate it but i every time i've tried I, i'm like i want to fucking mow the lawn i want to fucking mow the lawn i don't Do you, like it uh, i don't like it when she goes ask. on the i don't like it when she goes on the air and she fucking tells the audience that oh i do all the lawn mowing Every time I mow the lawn, I get yelled at and told how bad of a job I do. I literally have never yelled at you I, except you the one time three told years me what ago. a shit job I do. No, I've absolutely mowed the lawn. I try to mow the lawn. I do. I don't know what and they do. And April, mm. like, just, she insists on doing it, and I fucking, I... I don't know what the I, aggression I get a, is here, I get a, but I, I just, get abused for mowing the lawn. I enjoy it the way you enjoy doing whatever you like doing. I'm, I'm an abused man who doesn't get to mow his own lawn. Okay, and then I'm a... Wife who's portrayed as an abuser on air.
don't try to stop. If you're a little woman, don't try to stop a fight between no. two large men. Uh, uh, the only time I've ever done that, I really didn't feel like I should have even been there. And it was when you and your buddy was yeah. choking you out. And I did one of it these. It wasn't choking me. All right. We got the video, the, the wedding story. Yeah. we got, My buddy grabbed me by the neck when I fucking beat him in a rap battle. And, you know, if they would have remade Willy Wonka and said, well, Gene Wilder can't do it. Maybe in the late 80s, early 90s, if you would have remade it in like a comedy movie. I'm talking late 80s, early 90s here. Oh. Um... Go ahead, see if you can pick it out. Who am I thinking of? This would actually be a big name who I could see playing Willy Wonka and doing a really good job. Kind of the deadpan darkness of it. Uh, I want, yeah, and chat, I want you guessing as well. I'm thinking of a name. And if you need a hint, ask me for a hint. Okay. I want to, is he like a comedian? Is he an actor? Comedic actor. He's not a stand up comedian. He's, is this somebody he's a comedic you watch actor. often? He's a guy who's in oh, a lot uh, of. Oh, uh, the, uh, the men in black guy. The men in black guy, um, Rip Lee torn? something or other. Uh, Tommy, Tommy Lee, Lee Jones? Jones? No, I don't think he would have been a good Wonka. You know what? I'm retarded. The onions are always watching. <laughs> all I, five I, of them. Uh -huh. No, I, you know, Citizen M watches all these shows, so he always reports back okay. to me. Uh, Citizen M, weren't those guys like always, oh, Steel Toe sucks, oh, we hate them, oh, they're really gay, and this and that. Not a fan of Steel Toe. I've never been a fan of Steel Toe. I never will be a fan of Steel Toe. Steel Toe could be the last podcast on the face of the earth, and I'd rather put a bullet right between my fucking eyeballs. I'd rather George Floyd myself. Get your membership, compoundmedia.com. Anthony Cumia's site is so shitty that it has targeted banner ads all over. I mean, look at this. It really shows how low they went. Either a free, uh, not a free membership, a free trial, trial, a day pass, uh, and that I'm pretty confident. Once you check out what Compound has to offer, you'll pay the seven, eight bucks a month to get the membership. It's worth it for Steel Toe alone. I feel like if you like this show, there's no way you don't love all of Compound. Yeah, you'll like all of it. So. Enjoy. Uh, audience, man. You got to work on getting some listeners because there ain't that many. The only thing on Compound that has anybody is Anthony's show. Right. And we've watched as Gavin left the network. I left the network. Legion of Skanks left the network. Um, Aaron Berg has left the network. And we cut to a time now where Kumia is really left with nobody. He's got this big network. He's paying for a big studio. And then, of course, In Hot Water broke up. You saw Aaron Burr go. That was their other big show. But they're really left with nothing. Oh, yeah, Dave Landau left. wonder if Kumia is watching this. I'm sure he's really proud of his new bottom boy. One of the biggest reasons why I started disliking Steel Toe in the first place was he didn't have one bad thing to say about Kumia. Like, if you're trying to get on Compound and whatever, that's fine. You don't have one bad thing to say about this guy. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a bad thing. Just everything out of your mouth is sucking his nuts. So that was one of my biggest things when it came to Steel Toe. was that, you know, set and the begging. Those were the three things that I was like, yo, this guy is a, a clown. He's a clown. Aaron M. Holt is a clown. I mean, it, does Kumia date, like, really young? Yeah, he's also a multi-millionaire who, if he wants to date young girls, is allowed. The scariest thing ever. Anthony yeah. Cumia, as a 56-year-old man, he, he went to a prom with a 17-year-old girl. If you're 56 and you, and for some reason, you want to find the, a really young girl to be with, like, why go to all the way down to a high school prom? Can't you because find that's a nice- as low as a, you a can nice... legally go. I am fucking my brother's girlfriend's daughter. Okay, everybody, save this for the rape uh, conviction. I think I just raped her. I think I did. Is it true that this uh, podcast is run by alleged pedophile, Anthony Cumia? Oh, no, that's alleged. Gino. You Illegal. look at those fucking things. Illegal. I don't care if those are on a three-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> if tits like that... Look at this a fucking hot-ass body on her. She's probably had fucking 20 miles of black cock through her. So Redditors noticed that nearly every video Anthony liked featured young girls. I've seen hot ass 15 year olds. Hi, this is Olympic gold medalist Michaela Maroney. Oh. I know Anthony is a big fan of my selfies. I'll have to take one just for you. Boy, how creepy is that? <laughs> no such thing as the law. What? No such thing as the law. What, what age do you stop yourself? 13. Even, even 13 yeah. is where you stop yourself? 13. 13? What the fuck? You've never seen a hot, hot 13 year old that is completely fuckable? <laughs> And Kumia once gathered underage girls and took them home with Kurt Love, according to Danny Ross. Now, I do not believe... 
if Danny Ross. If we're the devil for working with somebody who's probably, you know, had to pay for whatever bad things they've done already. <laughs> See now that, see, that was a quicker. No. That sounds like one of those questions your girlfriend asks you when she catches you cheating, like one of those setup questions. Like she's like, "So, you ever talk to anyone named Mike?" And you're like, "Mike," and you know you have. You're like, "Oh fuck!" Wait, you're cheating with a dude? Gay? No, no, no. Because she's gonna go like, "Cause Mike told me that so and so." You're right. I should have just gone with the girl's name. <laughs> What are you going to do? I was, I was getting a little Wait too... Wait a second. Who's Mike? I was getting a little too clever with my shit. The I could boxers. send him my underwear, and he'd, he'd think it was women's underwear. Like, full-on boxers. And they're full like... Full-on boxers. He'd be like, these are so tiny. And oh, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Citizen M, nobody cares anymore. I mean, grow up. But I have a tiny little show with a tiny little audience. I'm not a big thing. I'm probably the best broadcaster. This is not a large show. It's a small niche little show. So yes, I fucked up my career, so now I gotta join these guys begging for super chats on the internet. Because I fucked up my career. So now I've got it. One thing you're gonna know about this show, it's the most honest show there is out there. We'll t we're not gonna be one of these shows uh, that lies to you and goes, oh, we can do it for this, we can do it for that. No, we're a fucking uh, failed radio show that f I fucked it up for myself, and now I do this show on the internet, and I beg you guys for money. Throw us a couple bucks and say thank you, and then we will say you're very, very welcome. Remember, even a five or a ten here and there uh, helps immensely. Links are in the chat. 350, it's a full one today, so... Get it done, and uh, then I won't stress and worry and flop sweat and shake my leg. And uh, like I said after the evening show yesterday, I go, ah, my career is really hanging on by a thread. Would you take a Sirius XM contract if they offered? I would take an anybody contract if they offered. I yeah, I I do this to raise my money now. I literally I do this. See that? I do that. Yes, I would enter. Just lost some money. Uh, yeah, I, I had to put that Our dime back. Our goal just in went there. backwards, everyone. By, back by 10 cents. Uh, yeah, this is bottom of the barrel. I mean, this is, uh, we've been, co like, we've called it radio jail. Uh, this is surviving. Right. This is surviving and probation until we can, you know, grow and work something else out. You got to remember, I mean, some of you listen to podcasts where the hosts are well into their 60s. This is it for them. This is all. I've got, you know, this can't be the end. This can't be it. This is a means to an end. There's so much hate for this guy on the internet. When I announced that WTP is going to be reviewing Steel Toe, he immediately took to Twitter, got on the offensive, mm -hmm. and started posting things like, well, in a private chat, Carl said, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you don't even know what we're doing yet. And you're already trying to reveal things from a private conversation. Right. It just shows the mentality. And I'm like, oh. Uh, that's not good, Aaron. That doesn't look. That's not a good look for you, buddy. It's kind it's of more of a stuttering John thing. Yeah, it was kind of fucked up. Aaron goes on his show the next day, and I'm watching this, and I wanted to see how Aaron was going to address this. Oh, and he doesn't. He hasn't listened to the episode, but he's heard things about it. Mm. And it's funny because he, what he's heard is from the very people who despise him. <laughs> so the people who didn't think that they went hard enough at him are the people he's getting his information from when he says that show was a flop. And everyone hated it. And so this is Aaron's response. And apparently people were upset. They didn't like it. The show was terrible. The The common complaint I heard from people was there was no content. They just, it was just them going, he sucks. I hate him. Completely not true. Like I said, there were 25 clips. So Aaron's going, yeah, they didn't even have anything to say because I'm amazing. So there's no way they could even say anything. And it's like, well, yeah, you have to, because the fact of the matter is not to toot our own horn. We do a really good show here. You can't play clips of it and go, Look at how bad at broadcasting these guys are. If anything, the one thing I do better than anybody in any realm we've been associated with ever is that I'm probably the best broadcaster in it, the best professional broadcaster. Certainly yeah. the most humble. You can make an argument for Bubba, I think, and uh, if you consider us, I guess we're part of Compound, so yeah, Anthony, obviously a better broadcaster. Oh, well, that's nice of him to say. He's not as good as, like, Bubba the Love Sponge. Or my boss. Been in major <laughs> markets and was on Sirius XM on the Howard Channel for all those years. Maybe he's not as good as Opie and Anthony, the second biggest morning show of all time. Maybe. Okay, I'll give it to those two guys. When he said Bubba, I was like, 
oh shit, he's putting himself in a category. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. A caster uh, than I am. But after those two, th there's nobody who could, if, you know, if Bubba got back on, on the air today or if Anthony got on the air today, they'd have success. If we got back on the air today, we'd have a lot of success. Uh, there's nobody else in that world that can say the same thing. So if you're going to do a show like those two were, you basically have to be creepy Reddit monster. I hate this guy. And that's not what that audience is looking for. So that is what that audience is looking yeah. for. Do you know some of the obsessive, retarded, stupid shit that haters of this show say about me or you? And do, do we respond to it? No, you don't. You know why? Because it's retarded autists who have nobody. You come in and you hate this show because you've been told to by other obsessive people and you just start loving it you can't not like this show i have noticed that people who don't like this show have a hard time just being happy in general like, you've got to be a pretty miserable prick not to enjoy what we do it's a great time if you're only on youtube you're doing fluff you if you've me. got the youtube rumble thing going on you're good you gotta be honest after monday and tuesday and then probably today I, I have a bit of a confession to make for all of you what is it i'm jealous of them of them. I wish I got to listen to this all day. Right? Like, what good morning show do you Man. have to follow this up? I don't like the look of this. Say what? Well. I know. I don't have anything like this to listen to, I'll tell you that much. I'll listen to In Hot Water today, but just to hear about myself. Of course. I don't know what to do with myself. You guys have this, and you have four and a half hours of it in the morning. And then three days a week, you'll get a couple hours uh, in the evening. Tonight, you've got a prize show. I, I, have a, I, I have to admit, I do too much. They are spoiled. I do too much. You're all spoiled. <laughs> hey, look, my first instinct is to say N-word, right? I just mean in I, everyday life. No? I don't mean this video. I just mean regularly. Oh. Citizen M says, still disappointed in you using the N-word. Uh, did I admit to using the N-word? I don't think I admit to that. I have no idea what you're talking about. I had black audience members at our comedy show scream at me that I had an N-word pass. And, you know, maybe I maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. There's no video. My 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 motherfucker. You sound racist. Good. Yes. Yes, I am. That's a, my favorite drop we have. Save the monkey story for compound. I okay. agree. Actually, 100%. Gino and I can do that one tomorrow. Do the monkey. Story Do Momo on the tax monkey tomorrow. Right. What's wrong with the blacks? <laughs> it, it, they're like angry, out of control. Uh, they don't think as individuals. Uh, you know, enough is never enough. They is Jesse reading my diary? I think so. A quote from Aaron Michael Imholt. This is from Aaron Imholt from the Steel Toe Beta. Uh, he said that the blacks uh, don't think. <laughs> they don't think in general. And uh, the book of Aaron Imholt was actually first written by Anthony Cumia, and he just stole it. Yeah, I don't think she's moving into this neighborhood no, anytime too soon. Too many blacks. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Oh. We're up to like four or five homes now. <laughs> Is that why your ring's missing? It was stolen? It was stolen. And I thought we couldn't call them the Dixie Chicks anymore. There. The chicks. I hate that so much. You don't like that? It's so fucking gay. Well, you can't be Dixie because what? That means slavery Whoa, if you say Dixie. Slavery. It didn't happen, guys. I wish we could just do fucking, what is that called? Uh, revisionist history or whatever. Just, it didn't happen. Right, yeah, there's never been slavery. What are you talking about? I actually don't know what slavery is. Slavery never happened. Our backup is gay ends from outer space. Yeah, I don't consider myself a racist person. I really don't. Oh, Lord, boss, show isn't racist. He is as equality-based as they come. That is sure why I'm here all month long. See, I'm not a racist guy. Oh, Shaka. Oh, Lord, Mr. Aaron, I was very offended when I saw that video of them white girls painting that girl's face. Were you really, Shaka? Like, how mad were you? Oh, I was hopping mad. Do you get the pun, sir? I do. I get the hopping because of the feet. Uh, what do you think should, uh, what should the punishment be? Oh, Lordy, I's done put those white girls in a hot box for at least a fortnight. That's right, just put them in the old steam box. Let them sweat it out and think about what they've done. After all, Miss Aaron, it is Black History Month, and we need to teach these white broads a lesson. I know you're with me on that one. 
Oh, absolutely, Shaka. I hear you, buddy. That's right. Me and Mr. Aaron talk all the time about how those white women need to have their driver's license, their working license, their voting license taken away so it's just us, the men folks, can have it. Am I right, Mr. Aaron? That's... I'd rather you didn't tell them. It always impresses go. me. His knees can go backwards. Yes, he's... <laughs> He's uh, our great double-jointed you-know-what. Yeah. Uh, Seth Martin says, did they already cover the black beast? Oh, no, we're just, what? what is it, 636? We're just warming up. One thing I do miss about radio, there's like an understanding uh, with the audience. Like, they just, they listen and they get things. And then there's something about the internet where it's very picky. You know, uh, you know what it is? People who listen to the radio aren't nearly as mentally ill and autistic as people on the internet. People on the internet are like, you know, for people who listen to radio go, oh, they're not on Thursdays. Oh, that thing I read must have just been a misprint. Uh, they're not on Thursdays. Oh, well, next thing. On the internet, it's like, I got you. Like, what do you mean? I got you. What do you mean you got me? Uh, you said Thursday and it's Thursday and you're not here. Well, then clearly that's not something we need to bring up. It's just, I don't do a show that day. And what you read was obviously incorrect. I'll fix it. I will say this. Uh, I hope the numbers are great today. I hope everything picks up today. I, I hope it's a, a solid crowd watching the show uh, because we've been doing uh, for the last couple weeks uh, some really fucking banger shows, some really awesome shows, and uh, it, it it should be it should be rewarded. Put it that way. I agree. Promise I'll fix it just for you though. It's my Twitter. I have to fix it. I have to make you the new banner. I don't give a shit about a banner. I'll put a fucking picture up. I don't care. Uh, Conroy. Arnold says, April looks sad. Is she okay? Ask her if she's sad or if she's okay. Maybe she is. Maybe she isn't. Are you going to kill yourself? What the actual fuck? No. Is that how we're starting off the day today? April looks sad. Oh, I'm ready for this fucking week to be over. Uh, wow. Loaded Wrench says Silicon, Silicon, Silicon Valley Bank is collapsing right now. I don't know what Silicon Valley Bank is. I don't read enough. Go get. April, are you okay? Genuinely asking. Where the fuck did this come from now? I don't know. Like, Maybe what, it's... what fucking internet <laughs> retard uh, put something out there that April's sad all the time? Is that the new fucking... I'm trying to coattail ride off of steel toe angle now. Oh, Aaron's depressed. Oh, April said, go do your own show. Honest to Christ, go do your own show. I'm sorry that some internet personality held you down and butt fucked you years ago. And now you're trying really hard to clout chase off of somebody else. But I ain't that motherfucker to steal on because I ain't going to give you the attention. I'm sorry. I just ain't. Uh, Conroy says she's married to Aaron. I'd be sad too. April does look sad. Yeah, Cheetos from Florida, you're gone. Welcome to Band World. I'm just in a you're gone kind of mood today. I really am. I'm fucking done. Uh, Fearless says, are you going to be nice to April next week? Yes, I've been an absolute dick to April. Have I been beating you? Not until Have right I been now. treating you poorly? I'm Not sorry. Until this second. I'm beating you now? Yes. Yes, now I'm yes, beating you. Yes, when I offer my help, I'm beating you. I'm ready to just fucking nuke them all. Uh, how's everybody? I heard April is upset. Ban that guy right there. All right, guess what? Fucking out of here. Uh, April is nice. She looks upset. Not kidding. Fine. We're all fucking... I'm a little concerned now. We're all gonna upset. blow our heads off. Oh, my Christ. Uh, Mersh broke down the chair. I don't give a fuck. I really don't. All of this horse shit, honest to Christ... All of this horse shit can go the fuck away. People are used to shows that don't do a show. They don't do a show. They're just angry and they do drama and fighting all the time. Silly me, I thought we could do a show where four hours of it was really fun. And we'd have a great time and be funny. And then, hey, let's pick on a guy for a little bit because their show sucks or they don't do a show where they're not any good. I didn't realize that I'm so fucking good at it. It would cause people to have mental breakdowns and like, tr like try to blow up the world and attack people I know that have nothing to do with it. I, I didn't know that that's what would happen. Silly me, I was naive, whatever. But one thing I miss about the radio is people understood it was entertainment. Here, it's just a 
band of retards. And you're better than the band of retards, but the band of retards are too much like chimps and they just go, <laughs> and you're like, shut the fuck up. Oh God, it's, you gotta teach these fucking people how to do shows and you gotta teach these people how to do programming and like how to do entertainment and all they do is no we could just we could just yell and scream about the same people for three years and it's like it fucking sucks these people are fucking terrible and then the people come into your chat and they're like oh you look sad you look upset you look this you look that and i'm like i wasn't until you started being autistic at me i have autism jesus i don't like you apparently april's sad she doesn't feel good she's done whatever uh, April, would you like to tender your resignation today because you're too sad? Jesus Christ, I didn't start my day this way. Are you too? Any are of you, you? Are you sad? I, I mean, I am now. Apparently, you're remarkably sad. Yes, I am. I am terribly sad. Everything is over. Gotta go back to bed. I think I'm done with this fucking show shit. Um, uh, Jero, Thanks. get the fuck out. I don't want to. You know, just fucking trauma patients, fucking trying to make me part of their world. I ain't gonna be part of it. I'm tired of your horse shit. I would rather burn this fucking thing down to like 400 people. Mission accomplished. At a time uh, and just restart there. Then deal with shithead retards trying to chase my coattails and clout chase off of me. I know our show grew a remarkable degree from last May to now. And I understand mm -hmm. when it goes from where it was last May to now, people get remarkably jealous. People get remarkably jealous. They're sad it didn't happen to them and they try to grab onto the coattails. But honest to Christ, it's pathetic. It's really fucking sad. You know what I feel like? It's yelling at children is what it is. So that's about, uh, you're, you're not gonna get a direct naming from me. People. Patrick Melton, Patrick Melton, <laughs> Patrick Melton, 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 actually Patrick Melton, it was Melton, uh, Patrick Melton, 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 the Patrick Melton, when Patrick Melton, that's gonna be about it. Oh, dude, smile. Your wife is a dang ten. I yeah. Being a ten doesn't fix anything. It really doesn't. But now what's the problem? Am I the problem now? Am I shouting? Am I yelling? I haven't shouted all morning. Am I? Have I been upset? Have yeah, I been angry? Yeah, kind of came in here uh, cylinders ablaze. I don't understand. Was I was I being uh was I being hostile? I don't know. Uh, I want to see the numbers go back up. Go get people fucking with you and trying to fuck with your business and all that shit. I fuck that. I don't do that to people. So fuck those people, they're done, and uh, they're dead. They've been dead for a long time. They're just trying to suck off my cock. Time for funny, time for the shit I've organized. If today's show isn't good, I can always retire. Welcome everyone. We've got a fun show planned for you today. And isn't that the whole point of doing this? To have a little fun? You hope. Kev. <laughs> Kev. I'm gonna have his ex-wife on my show. Oh. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to tell people what they can and can't listen to. When Misery Loves Company basically becomes the Steel Toe Obsession show, I'm sorry for accomplishing very, very little uh, at 36, but as much as Kevin having his first appearance with us here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kevin Brennan. How's it going? <laughs> you got punked, bitch. <laughs> I literally, I do this. See that? It's here on my street corner, battling evil. I do that. Because I always thought my whole career that when you watched someone's performance and made fun of it, that was kind of like fun broadcasting, having a good time. You broke Kevin's brain when you took the compound offer. Isn't that sad? Like that would not, like Kevin's had a show on compound. Never bothered me. No. Nope. Like, never affected me in the least, never. And wait, it never bothered you that you weren't the one on compound? <laughs> no, it never bothered me. Um, I think what they've done is gone to a level of scumbag that I'm not comfortable going to. I can't personally go to that level of scumbag. Your kid became trans because you're a shitty dad? I don't ever understand, like, what the likes of us have done to anybody to like warrant that type of behavior what the likes of us have done to anybody you all like what alex jones did to the parents of the elementary school right what he said some words 
big deal. Their kids got fucking blown away right. by gunfire. I don't think words are going to really uh, take Alex, away or bring their children back. No, Alex Jones isn't going to help or hurt that situation. No. Anthony should absolutely go to Mike David's funeral. Yeah. Yeah, it, you should. Would oh, you say Dixie? Slavery. It didn't happen, guys. People know how I feel about the mentally ill. If you have mental health issues, you're really at high risk with anything. Just I mean, by being you. You know, if you, know? you have mental health issues, you know what else is high risk? Bad news. <laughs> <laughs> the weather. The sun right. didn't come out today. It's really, really right. gloomy. Vitamin D shortage is a serious problem if you have mental health issues. Somebody looked at you the wrong way. Right. Somebody waved weird. Uh, that is a huge risk if you have mental health issues. You're just, yeah, you're just clearly unstable at best. You don't usually see that in that community. Right. I usually see lots of very calm, level-headed <laughs> trans people. It's an aggressive move for a lady. Yeah, that's not very ladylike. No, right. that's not very ladylike no. at all. Somebody's being a real tomboy. Because typically, made if I jokes, think somebody sucks, jokes I just them. don't listen. You want to talk about ex-wives and children and your kid became trans and shit like that. That's where I just look at you and go, you're too far gone. You're lost. I'll do, I'll do my fun show. This has been a very fun show. Very fun show. Very fun week. I gotcha! You guys can do whatever you want. Fine. Ed says Aaron is soft. That's fine. That's fine. I don't know how that's soft. Like going after somebody's children. Your kid became trans. It's absolutely not okay. They're not part of this yeah. world. I'm going to say this, Ed. Aaron's just more of an adult. <laughs> <laughs> and more of an entertainer. <laughs> and more of a guy who does a show. <laughs> Kevin's a nobody. We're moving on past them. And I think that's the problem that they're having uh someone else saying us getting the compound offer broke kevin of course it did of course it did uh, we're on our way up uh -huh. here's here's an area that would help uh we dropped under 600 members again which is not a big deal that's what happens every month you know you go down mm -hmm. and then you come back up and it, we we right. we operate on either side of 600 members he they're in their 60s this is their retirement plan of course that's going to hurt them. But stare at your own mortality. Don't get jealous of me. I text Bob yesterday to tell him, hey, there's going to be some blowback. I don't want any of what's coming to affect you. Because I know the blowback that's coming. Look, Bob, I know that you're not going to confront these guys. You don't have it in you. You did technically threaten him. You just used the word blowback instead. No, I said there's going to be not a threat. There's going to be blowback for Chad and Kevin for what's going on here. Bob didn't go, yeah. how about we stick to Aaron and yeah. his performance? Ed goes, isn't that, isn't that a threat, though? No, wait, that's not a threat. I, I said really... Kevin and Chad are going to face blowback for what they're doing. I don't want it to affect you. I don't know if we're just a bunch of small brain crayon munchers over I there at MLC, but it know. isn't good, guys. I don't know how better Figure to it explain out. it Maybe to pull you. yourself out of those circles and do better. Because, I mean, you all made fun of stuttering John's kids. Incorrect. I never did. Your kid became trans because you're a shitty dad? I would never. I think that's gross. I know uh, every time anyone ever brought up that stuttering John has a trans kid, I said, you're a shitty dad? That ain't none of anybody's fucking business. That ain't no. any of anybody's fucking business. I don't know anything about any of these people's kids. I don't know anything about any of these people's kids. Anthony Kumia, in my opinion, is at his absolute best when the gloves are off and he's beating the living dog shit out of somebody. Anthony goes full family on this one. I'm truly excited to see this. I feel like we haven't um, seen this in a long time. Here's Anthony talking about stuttering John as a father and family man. I co-sign everything Anthony's about to say here. He seemed to have uh, uh, scrubbed every picture of his uh, daughter become son off of the internet. Do we have? Well, that's the only one. That was when stuttering John's daughter was a girl. Now his son is a boy. That So then Anthony decides, you know what I'm going to do? Make fun of his transgender kid. I'm going to make fun of his transgender kid. She didn't want to be a lesbian. She wanted to be a dude. <laughs> and he, where Anthony's like, if he's going to tell people I'm doing this, then I'm at least going to get the joy of doing I'm gonna it. I'm going to make it good. Yeah. Because Stuttering John was such a poor parent, such a, a 
non-existent father oh. for this lovely girl here. Uh-oh. That she was screaming for some kind of attention. Oh. Screaming for some type of attention Ouch. and just didn't get it. I think the reason Stuttering John felt the need to respond to this is because I think deep down there's a dark part of Stuttering John that thinks the same thing Anthony thinks. Usually when people like get where when they evoke like a super severe reaction to something, there's something in there that they were thinking already. Very few things get to me. You know, you've seen me laugh off and like dismiss people online for yeah. anything. If somebody says like, oh, you're a shitty father, your kids suck or something like that, I want to, I want to kill them. A super severe reaction to something. There's something in there that they were thinking already. Yep. So that, that's a weird, like that one lands on yeah. those lines. If you don't think there is a dark place in John's soul, a place that he doesn't even like going to himself because he, he's worried he'll never come out of it. That goes, I wonder if my behavior as a father, if being the drunken dipshit buffoon on the radio every day, if being the subservient cuck boy to all these people on the Stern show for all these years, if that ever led my daughter to be ashamed of me, mm -hmm. if that ever led her to not have any male guidance, if that led her to lash out and rebel, and that might be part of why they're trans today. A retard alert. It certainly contributed. I if guess. he says he doesn't ever think about it, he's a fucking liar and it hurts too much for him to admit it. Yep. There's there's not even a small chance that he hasn't thought that. I don't know anything about any of these people's kids before. I, I think Anthony's touching a very raw place in John's nerves. But you know what? John f John's earned it. So the, the girl starved of fatherly love and attention goes, can you cut my tits off? Can you just cut my tits off and we'll try to fabricate some kind of a, a, a cock, a proxy cock, a, a cock's proxy? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> now, when your daughter decides because she's attention starved because of her fucking uh, non-existent father's love oh to become a boy, mm. oh. now you have to do something. Because I believe at some point in his life, he might start looking back and go, nah, maybe I maybe I screwed the pooch. I knew what I was going to say about Gino and how I was going to come over the top of him without even hearing what he had to say. He talks a mile a minute and never goes anywhere. Yeah. So I knew that whatever he had to say, it was hacky and it was just lowbrow dumb shit. So I was like, I'll just hit Gino where it hurts. And then a day of that and Gino went, well, I'm done with this guy. You're not fucking done with this guy. You got humiliated. Dude. Often a typical response, though, from the person like in John's position that, oh, now he's all mad and stuff like you did these things that right. probably like caused a worthy response right. from Anthony. John, now, oh, why are you so mad? It's John's one of these guys. He starts shit. And then when people hammer him back harder, he goes, look at how uh, look at how disp look at how disp look at how this low these guys are he's like a little mouse taunting a cat like and then when he gets bit he goes why is that cat such a bully exactly oh why are you so mean fuck you homophobia John. transphobia nah nah oh why because you feel what guilty because your kid became trans probably because you're a shitty dad as you feel guilty as a dad doesn't mean you need to project that onto anthony or carl or me or anybody else he calls anthony pocky because of anthony's okay. pock marks from his childhood acne Oh, really? But bullying is wrong. First of all, <laughs> my position, call him Pocky. He can make fun of you for being a shitty dad. So now shut the fuck up and take it, bitch. Stay away from me. I what? tried to call the police. He turned the phone off. You shouldn't have lied and shouldn't have hit me I'm and you shouldn't have treated me like shit. I'm asking, I'll pay to have you go... I don't need a, you to pay for a car. I need you to pay for my fucking broken hand, you dumb about, piece of shit. But you're moving your hands. What are you talking about? This is oh, Stay away from me, you <laughs> fucking psycho! <laughs> Come on, baby! He's young, way young. He could be... A, he's old enough to be her father, biting her hand, and then... I don't know. I know he yeah, and you know what? He didn't even <laughs> fuck that girl up enough to turn her trans. What's your excuse, John? But I don't know who would be biting some young girl's hand. This sounds a little sick. Any older man who's dated a younger girl? Uh, I don't know who would want to bite a, 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 a younger girl. Have you ever talked to a girl in their 20s? Ugh. The most biteable human beings you'll ever meet. That and a menopausal bitch. It definitely is, has attacked Chad. He started the beef with Chad.
April encouraged Aaron when this all started against Chad. She said, don't you ever stop doing this to him. It's so funny. Then meanwhile, on a recent show, she's like, I only want it when it's fun for both parties. It's like he wrote you a private email asking you to stop, telling you you don't want to do this. Please knock it off. You made me learn your name. I didn't want to know it. I tried hard. I'd see videos. I want to click onto the videos. I'd be like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know this guy. And finally, I just had enough, man. You were so relentless, tagging my tweets, quoting my tweets, coming at me, calling me a bitch. And you all laughed and laughed and laughed and just kept fucking with him. Now what, dummies? Who's the bitch now? Who's the bitch now? Because you have a complicated life where you've fucked your life up and have a strained relationship with your ex. He can't go there because it would make things awkward and difficult for you. Fuck you, dog. Fuck you. This is the real fucking world, baby. You play with the shark, you get the fins. You don't get to do this thing where you're like, hey, I have a weird thing with my ex and my kids, so please don't even go there. It's like, motherfucker, that's what we're doing. We're cutting open bellies and seeing what's inside. Aaron's parents love Ashley LaRue more than him. Sad. Well, you know. Do I seem like the most lovable guy? Hey, and isn't that the whole point of doing this? Yeah. To have a little fun. I'm having a fucking blast. (laughs) Kev. <laughs> just because you got more skeletons than chad chad's got all his arrest records and all that stuff and you had no problem pulling all that up and laughing because everybody in aaron's family hates april um everybody the father aaron uh, just admitted that he uh hasn't spoken to his parents in two years because he married april no one likes her nobody wants her in the family everyone hates her Let's get the fuck out of here. You invited this community of ridicule in, and now you're getting it. Uh, look, the fact is, Steel Toe's like grifting people. Like, he's fucking over either ignorant or stupid people, and it's on a mass scale daily. So, like, I don't feel bad. Like, I'm not fucking that guy over. He's breaking the law. He's taking advantage of people. He's a bad dude. That's a bad guy. I find that what Chad does is kind of the Jersey Shore reality TV equivalent of podcasting, whereas I do a professional morning broadcast. Uh When Aaron made fun of Stutchon's trans kid, was that just fun and not across the line? Did you make fun of his kid? I don't know if I made fun of his kid. I know we did a clip of him talking about it, and I definitely, I guarantee, I can't remember, I guarantee I probably made some jokes. And, you know, depending on what the jokes are, if they were over the line, I would say I'm sorry for that. I think a lot of us during that stuttering John thing, that was a clout chase on all of our parts. And we probably all went a little bit over the line. So if I said if I said anything disrespectful about John talking about his and I'm sorry for forgetting daughter, son, I don't want to, you know, get into all that. I mean, if I went, I mean, if I went uh, too far and over the line, then yeah, I apologize for that every time. How did John Melendez respond when Aaron apologized him? I don't think John's on the internet. What the fuck? I understand you and WATP making fun of Obi, but none of y'all have made videos dissecting and laughing at Anthony's antics at once at his dispense. It seems there's a deeper perception to be biased. We do have a couple up there. I know there's one of anthony's commenting on remember when owen benjamin commented on gavin doing that fake fbi raid and i think we kind of took we took owen's side on that deal and we criticized anthony and gavin and then i think i'm a bigger anthony fan than an opie fan uh so there's probably going to be more videos of us criticizing opie than criticizing anthony and also full disclosure uh we are currently working with compound media and in doing so I'm not a boss. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a disloyal piece of shit who's going to take a guy who came on our show and said, hey, do shows on our network. So you're officially joining Compound. Like you're you're still tell the shows joining Compound or you're doing Uh, another show. mm. Why make fun of that female radio host being fat when your mother in law is pushing 300 pounds herself? And I think involving people who don't want to be involved is kind of a scumbag, dirtbag move. But again, that's an MLC person. What do you expect? Everyone buy LaRue's book so Aaron's kids can have food. (laughs) What is your relationship with your ex wife? Can you talk about that? Uh, It's no, I, I don't mind, but at the moment, it's a little. 
Okay. Eh. It's, you know, I, I don't want to bring in people who have expressed a, need, a want to not be involved. He wrote you a private email asking you to stop. That's what made me upset about it in the first place. But these, these are okay. people who ask not to be involved. You made me learn your name. I didn't want to know it. So and that was not her interacting with Chad. Well, there's. Or you can't comment on that. I, I cannot. You that can't. Is, all right. That is currently. All right. The well, then this is, I'm going to say. I'm thinking in a month or so, maybe. <laughs> What the fuck was that text message about, Aaron? You've you've danced around it, but what the fuck was that about? My issue here again is the phrasing of the goddamn question. He's a bob and weaver. He's a guy who's very much in control of what he wants to say. He knows how to get his message uh, across. You have to ask an anchored question to warn of a potential blowback in connection to what you called, quote, involvement, unquote, and, quote, lies, unquote, connected to your family. You texted, quote, sorry for what's coming. I didn't ask for it, unquote. You texted, I genuinely hope that what comes down doesn't cause you any professional harm that's reading from the text have i mean he's still going to say what he's going to say but at least if you quote from the text it takes out well was it a threat no you, there it is right there you, you how could anybody not interpret that as a text what specific blowback were you talking about as it related to bob levy isn't it time for you to come clean about those texts to bob levy levy told patrick melton referencing you thank god someone is here to teach us radio what's your reaction to that there were more texts to bob i was on a show at the time when he sent me his text going what does this mean he didn't understand and, and as I read the text, it was too vague. And it does have to do with the like certain things I'm dealing with now about people who didn't want to be brought up and mentioned. Um, and my whole thing to him was like, look, if any of what you know this person is saying comes out, it's it's not about you. Like this isn't I I like, I love and respect Bob. And look, Bob, I know that you're not gonna confront these guys. You don't have it in you. And then he said, This sounds like a threat. There were three more texts I sent him clarifying what I meant. Bob, Can you clarify now what you meant? In a month, I probably will clarify. I just don't buy that a guy who talks on the radio for seven hours a day doesn't understand passive aggressiveness. And that was kind of no. your response. You were like, oh, who, me? I'm just this bumbling hick from Minnesota, and I don't watch The Soprano, so I don't know how y'all in New Jersey talk. And I just don't buy that at all. I think you knew exactly what you were saying, and you were trying to threaten, like, there's some... Whatever happened to that lawsuit, by the way, that you were threatening? Not a lawsuit. I said, I'm going to have to contact my lawyer. And did you? Uh, and was he like, stop contacting me with bullshit? No, not at all. No, because this you're, ta you're not talking about... I wasn't talking about Bob or anyone else on that. This was a very personal matter about people who don't want to be involved. So you're you're actually confusing two different things that I don't think are part of the broadcast world here. But there were three other texts that I sent that clearly clarified what I meant that didn't see the light of day, which I'm happy they don't. I don't believe in releasing people's text messages and releasing people's DMs. I don't believe in that. So, so I'm not, one, one last I'm, thing I had well, a problem I'm certainly with. not going to do it. Surely saying you were washing your hands of Bob. What does that mean? How does somebody was, who's a nobody wash their hands of Bob leaving? That that was as again, that was as the whole family members, children thing was going on with Chad. And you know, all this shit is going on. And then I'm getting phone calls from people who don't want to be involved. And I'm like, nobody's gonna tell this piece of shit to, you know, cut the fucking horse shit here. I gotta, I gotta kind of circle my own wagons. And I got to make my circle a little bit tighter because you're not getting the phone calls I am. I had to kind of tighten the circle a little bit because there was uh, this thing created a whole big mess. But, uh, you know, Mersh from Nightwave Radio said it perfectly. Like these people aren't your friends. Like these people aren't you're, you're at very best your co-workers in streaming so Matt and 20 and married in 21 hmm fast why do you constantly call everything a win while you're losing fans mods are quitting and turning on you is that winning everybody in podcasting wants to win and destroy and this and that <laughs> calling everything a win is kind of fucking with the people they come in and they go you're not winning or you're not this so if you say you are winning that drives them a little nuts aaron Whoa. is a politician he lies with a confident smile talking a big game trying to be his altruistic person he is truly a snake. I agree with that. This can't be the end. This can't be it.